Hey. Are you quick? Neck now, Skip Lowry. It looks like we're going live. I still see a thinking bar going on here. I don't know if I'm 100% live yet. Am I live yet? 100%? I think I am. Hello, Ayukui. Neck now, Skip Lowry. Long time no see. I'm so happy to be back with you guys here on Facebook Live. I apologize for the break in uh, my Facebook Lives. Um, things are moving fast in our district. We're doing a lot of awesome, great things and building our interpretive program and uh, technology sometimes doesn't work so I really appreciate you guys hanging in there for everybody that uh, has been joining previously maybe you're new um, we just really appreciate you all so uh, I see hello Sarah hello Amanda thank you guys so much for joining um, I'm gonna give it just a couple minutes here hopefully some other people can sign back up but during this time I really want to express how important it is that uh, we appreciate as uh, California State Park employees that everybody that is happening to visit our parks and in your own communities um, exercising exercising your uh, responsibility to protect the people next to you by masking up and social distancing and we're very, very appreciative and supportive of that so that um, we can heal from the time that we've had in the past, recent past. Uh, it's been really hard for a lot of people. Um, so we appreciate everybody honoring that, that it's about the person next to you and uh, honoring our social distancing and masking up procedures in California here. So today, my topic is um, interpreting Yurok culture respectfully. And to do that, you have to understand a terminology called uh, intellectual property and cultural, intellectual cultural rights and responsibility. And so for eons, the Yurok culture has honored that songs and stories and knowledge um, has a, a place from where it's come from. I have two guests here that are actually being pretty goofy, and um, I'm hoping they can join me at the end of this program if they're not too goofy and distract me. So bear with me if I have to uh, let my two sons know that they need to be quiet <laughs> during this live stream. They're going to join in and sing a song in a minute. So uh, if they can... We'll see. So, intellectual property. That means what comes through me is like my responsibility. And no one can take that away. So in your in your culture, in history, we have songs. And songs are often created into beautiful regalia. And so to respectfully interpret your culture. You have to understand that this regalia has the intellectual rights and responsibility to sing its song. It was made for a purpose. It was designed for a reason. And once it's created, it embodies that, uh, those prayers and that resonance. And as humans, we are responsible to make sure we fulfill and help it in its path of life. So this this necklace is an abalone shell necklace that my mom made me when I graduated college. So its songs are those of like pride and gratefulness and love and protection. I hear so much in this song. If this song, if this necklace were to be taken away from our community and hung in a museum, it wouldn't sing its song. So we're disrespecting its intellectual rights and responsibility to sing that prayer song, to sing that love song, to sing that protective song, to sing that song of um, pride 
and responsibility. And so today, what I'm going to do, talk just a little quickly, a little bit more about, I'm going to, sh I would like to share a song from a human. This is the Eker, you say Eker in Yurok, Eker, that's necklace. And it, they all have their own personality and songs and beauty. And no one should take that away from it. They should be able to join the community, join the society, and hold its place and honor its responsibility. So to, to interpret Yurok culture respectfully, you got to understand that our regalia is not just for looks. They are beautiful. They sound beautiful. But they're alive and um, vibrant with energy. And they sing songs. And that's theirs. And it's not okay to deny them to sing their song, which often has happened in recent history where these items of prayer have been forcefully removed from our community and are now housed in museums across the globe um, and not honoring what they were made for. Now, mind you, there are some regalia that were made for the purpose of display. Like they knew when you make regalia, it has a purpose. And so there are canoes and there are a care. And so canoe is off we watch and a care that are made for display. And so they know that that's what they're doing and that's okay. But when they weren't made for that, when they were made to be in ceremony and then stolen from the community, often violently, um, underneath the clause of manifest destiny, um, that's not okay. And so there's restorative justice that's involved with returning sacred prayer items to their home and to their communities so they can hopefully fulfill their responsibility and be alive in the way they were supposed to be. So today I'm going to share a song from, from me that came through me. And so to tie the regalia to a person, we're all spiritual beings in your art culture. Um, and we want to create the world in a beautiful way. One time I was whining about helping and I was saying, oh man, why am I have to help all the time? And this song hit me, boom, and came out before I even, I wasn't trying to sing. I'm gonna, I'd like to share this with you now. And my two sons are here to back me up. But this song is my intellectual property. No one can sing it. It's prayers, it's, it's feelings unless I give it away. Now I can share it with you. Please, if you feel this song, sing it at home, sing it when you're traveling, sing it to yourselves, but don't try to appropriate it and make money off it. Don't try to make it your own. Feel what you're sharing with somebody and honor that it's not yours, but you feel it. And that's what I'm trying to say today I'm a little bit scared to share my song because this song is no longer mine. It came through me and I gave it to my oldest boy. But there is so much power and strength in song that it would be against this song to hoard it for myself, okay? To put it in my own personal museum. This song is saying from its essence, there's no words. It's saying, I'm here to help. I'm here to help. Let me help. Let me help. I'm here to help. I'm here to help. Make me help. Make me help. And I, this song came through me in a time where I was griping about being helpful. So it was a learning process for me. And my interpretation creator kicked me in the, in the butt and said, that's what you're here for you're here to help the community you're here to help your family you're here to help nature you're here to help and if you're not helping you're hurting 
And on that note, silence is violence from my perspective and interpretation. If you're not helping, you're hurting. Possibly. That's deep. So I go deep sometimes, and today I want to share something that came from my soul because I was being bleh. And the Creator came and said, no, you're doing what you're supposed to do. You're here to help. And I'd like to share the Yurok cultural understanding that this song is not to be co-opted or exploited and to make money off of. It's here to help. So if this song helps you in any way possible, that's a blessing in itself. And so without further ado, I'm going to ask my two sons to come join me. And we're going to share a song with you. And we're going to ask respectfully that this song stays as part of your culture and our family. But if you like it and appreciate it and you feel it, you're welcome to join that. We're all here to help. Let us help. Make us help. This is my son, Koneknik, and my son, Rapoy. And they're going to back me up on this. you guys backing me up um they're make they were wearing abalone shell necklaces and in a future post we'll talk a little bit more about how special abalone is um in your culture and uh we'll sing some more songs and we really appreciate everybody that's joined i'm gonna look here and see if there's any comments uh, really fast Hello from San Francisco. Thank you, Sarah Hunter, for sharing this. Uh, uh, no, uh, shortly, really quick. It, what I asked my dad is, I wanted to share something. I'm really passionate about my culture, and whenever I hear about mistreatment, I get really, like, really angry. Uh-huh. Okay. Thank you. So there's a lot of emotions that come with sharing stuff that, as not that long ago, was targeted for elimination. Um, you got to call it out. And that's what part of restorative justice is, is that um, there are cultural items that need to come home. There are songs that need to be respected in our communities. Um, and there's a passion that is enveloping the future to create a beautiful world together. And California State Parks um, really is trying to honor that relationship and that rebuilding of intellectual um, respect and property rights. And uh, we're in a good time of healing right now. So. That's the only reason why I would be able to share the songs, because I feel 
strong about us as a community to move forward together um, and interpret my culture, what's passionate to me, um, through California State Parks in a way where we build a relationship that's beautiful for all to enjoy and respect together. So thank you guys for everything. Um, everybody out there is doing what they can and from the bottom of my heart, much respect.